Hello guys and welcome to the second video in the series for B-Flash training tutorials. Over this tutorial we're going to be covering a few things, starting with the CAN bus monitoring uh, function built into B-Flash and then we're going to go into looking at um, reviewing logs and also taking data logs with B-Flash. Now the first part of this video, um, we're going to go into Canvas monitoring and from here what you need to do is you need to basically connect up that uh, two-way splice cable which allows the intersection between a diagnostic testing tool, B-Flash and then the OBD port. This particular t um, adapter will allow B-Flash to basically uh, filter oncoming traffic and, and outgoing traffic between the diagnostic tester and the uh, control unit which is being communicated with. So what happens is um, basically the messages are sent from and to the CAN and B-Flash will pick up the, uh, the messages that are sent from and to. So what we need to do first basically is connect our diagnostic tester up to the, the Y split. I've got my B-Flash connected on one end and I've got DTS Monaco uh, connected to the other end. And then both of those two are going into the OBD port of the C63. And from here what we can basically do is we can turn the ignition on and we can go ahead and click start. So at this point in time, we're gonna be getting quite a lot of traffic on the CAN. Of course, being such an advanced uh, vehicle, we're gonna have a lot of messages being sent back and forth. This can be things sim as simple as temperature uh, messages that are being sent from the engine control units, the instrument cluster, or anything like that. There will be a from and to address within the CAN message itself, and there's obviously data within that. If you don't understand CAN, there's plenty of good tutorials on YouTube and plenty of good uh, write-ups on the internet if you need to understand how CAN messages work. But from here, basically what we can do is we can go ahead over to something like DTS Monaco. We can connect to the engine control unit or a control unit of our choice. That message will then be sent over the CAN from the uh, diagnostic tester to the control unit. The B-Flash tool will pick up that message in this particular log we've got right in front of us and um, save it. Now, we can also go ahead and do other functions like read, error codes, and then that'll send the CAN message across from the diagnostic tester to the control unit and B-Flash will pick up that particular snapshot of a CAN message. Now, you're probably wondering why might this be useful? Well, there are plenty of uses for this particular function. Um, the first one being the ability for uh, an individual or a company to develop their own diagnostic testing system or their own tuning equipment. Um, and this would be one of the ways in which you would basically go about doing that. It would be learning how CAN messages are sent to and from the CAN. Um, it could be for your own understanding, maybe you're a university lecturer and you want to teach your class about how CAN messages work and how different control units communicate. This would be a perfect example of how you do that. Or you might want to understand how seed keys are interpreted and, and uh, uh, calculated. So that might be something that you might use this for as well. So that's just a basic sort of overview of how this uh, CAN bus monitoring system works. I've also used it for other things like um, trying to pick up paddle shifts on the on the um, on the steering wheel. So when you pre pull the paddle shifts on either side, plus or minus, up or down gear, the CAN message will be sent, and you can capture that CAN message. And from there, you can also use that CAN message in the ECU, create your own custom routines, things like that. Um, so it's good to always be able to pick up those things as well if you're doing development. Maybe you, you want to work on the cruise control stalk for a way of um, activating and changing maps or launch control, things like that. Um, that might be something that you could that you could do with this. So yeah, that's the first part of uh, this B Flash tutorial done. Um, if you guys need any help with that, feel free to send me um, an email or a message or a comment below. No problem whatsoever. And just don't forget, guys, to like and subscribe. Um, follow our channel. We're, we're coming out with quite a few different tutorials lately. Um, B Flash will be, you know, this is the second um, tuning tuning tutorial in the series. We've got covered a few of Magic Motorsports methods quite a few years ago, but now we're going into sort of um, B-Flash and we're helping these guys out with um, some tutorials. And in the future, we're, we might be looking to partner with some other uh, tuning companies and tuning tool companies to sort of give you guys tutorials on how these things work. Some of them might be paid. This one, uh, this particular series is free, so take full advantage of it. And yeah, if you like what you see, um, yeah, like I said, like and subscribe and awesome. Just, just pay attention to our content, guys. Um, there'll be something out maybe once a week. So really looking forward to having you all uh, watching our channel. Now, like I was saying, going to our data logging, the first thing we'll need to do, of course, at this point, is we wanna click on vehicle selection. 
Now from here, like I was saying in the previous video, you'll scroll down to your particular vehicle, this one being a C63S W205. This is the four liter V8 twin turbo. Uh, we'll go to MED 17.7.5 with the Tricore 1797, oh sorry, 1793 Tricore processor, okay? And then we'll click next. Um, the protocol we're using today is OBD protocol. Lucky for us, we've got manufacturer specific data logging um, and diagnostic, just general diagnostic. So we'll go over the diagnostic function as well. Um, so we can go on, click on OBD, click next. And then from here, we've basically got our ability to obviously read and write. We went over that last episode. So that's in the flashing tab here. We wanna move across to diagnostic. Um, and here we can also read codes with the ignition on. And for here, we'll go through manufacturer specific error codes. And as you can see, there's no um, pending trouble codes and no confirmed trouble codes. So that's great. We're happy with that. If we want to go ahead and clear codes, we can do so. Please note that when you clear codes on some engine control units, it may reset long-term trims, like long-term fuel trims and things like that. Um, so yeah, just be, just be mindful that when you do clear codes, it might do things like that. Um, now data logging, this is very specific to the uh, particular application and the tuning company that is going to be doing the work with this tool. So, um, of course, you've got different parameters that are being selected for a, a variety of uses. You might have uh, parameters selected because you're trying to calculate a boost uh, PID controller um, in a vehicle. So you'll need to understand how like uh, specified boost, actual boost, wastegate position, and maybe uh, gains are calculated and you'll log those sorts of things. So they're particular parameters that you'll look out for. Um, and not all manufacturer specific data logging PIDs will actually allow you to log things like that. So if you are looking to go really deep level, you might need something like an A2L. Um, I'll just basically go ahead and explain what an A2L file is uh, now here. Just come over to the Vector website and um, I'm just gonna quickly explain what an A2L file is. So an A2L is, uh, description files allow the user to access variables internal to the control unit by symbolic names. Um, so one of those might be nmot underscore w for uh, vehicle engine speed or RPM, sorry. Um, and basically they're used with different programs such as um, ASAP2 demo, they can be used with can uh, Canape by Vector or um, Inca or Insa by ETAS. Okay, um, it's just a type of file. If you want to learn more, please go to the Vector website or maybe look more into ASAP2 Demo uh, or even um, ETAS and you'll learn a little bit more about it. Yeah, so back to the video now. Okay, so um, yeah, so now that we know what an A2L file is, um, it's, it's obviously, like I said, not something that we can um, give out to everyone. It's not something that we particularly have. Um, it's a manufacturer specific uh, file and um, calibration file, so it's not used within tuning companies or supposed to be. Um, so what we're uh, what we can't really go over that today is I don't have any, um, but we can go over the B Flash standard logger, and uh, we'll go ahead and do that now. So we've got the ignition on. We can go ahead and connect. Okay. So from here, what we'll do is we'll click on the plus symbol on the right hand side, and then we'll be given a list of folders that are all grouped. And we can basically go ahead through these folders and decide what we want to uh, go ahead and select. It will already pre-select things that B Flash has, has deemed important for us to log from, from standard what the tool comes with. Um, I'm really happy with what it logs, but obviously, as you can see, we've got boost pre pressure regulation, eye parts, that's the integral part of the proportional, oh sorry, integral part of the PID controller. Um, and then we've got all these other things like intake, manifold, pressure, and wastegate position, all those sorts of things. So we can go ahead and select anything that we need to log um, for this particular car, and we can go ahead and press OK. Please be mindful, the more uh, data samples or PIDs that you log, the, the lower the sample rate or the data acquisition rate will be. So if you've got 100 PIDs that you're trying to log, you might only be getting, um, you know, maybe two uh, sorry, one sample every like two seconds or one sample every three seconds. You want something as high as about 20 hertz, which is uh, 20 samples a second. That would be great. That would be fantastic. Um, that often will require something called CCP and XCP. You guys can look that up on Wikipedia or you can look it up on Google, YouTube. Um, it is something that these ECUs are capable of and with an A2L you can go ahead and do that. But let's say we're happy with these particular variables. We can go ahead and press OK. Now here we've got Obviously the variables we've selected, um, we've probably got a sample rate of about one sample a second or maybe two samples every second of each variable um, and the car is off. So what we can go ahead and do if we want to, we can go ahead and hold the brake, press start on the car. 
So I've got the car started now, and as you can see, uh, the PIDs are they're, uh, showing us some values. So what we can go ahead and do is, let's say we're on the dyno, we can go ahead and um, start our log now. So we'll go start logger. Uh, if you want to, you can compress it. If you want to as well, you can also add in some uh, extra data and then press OK. Now the data log will begin. So for here, what you can do is go ahead and do your run. Okay, let's say that was our run, fantastic run. All right, let's stop the logger. Okay, let's say we want to save it as a test, B flash, log one. Okay, fantastic. No problem at all. Okay, so that's gone ahead and that's finished our log. Let's say that was, uh, we're happy with that. We can go ahead and press disconnect. So that will disconnect us from the engine control unit and from there we can go ahead and review our log. So to review our log, we'll go ahead to the log analysis icon up here. Go ahead and click it and from here we can go and review the log that we've taken. Now as you can see it was only, you know, what, 11 second log, that's fine. This is just for the purpose of demonstration. Um, so I'll just go over some really cool things here. We can export this log uh, so we can convert the measurement diagnostic file that, we, that B Flash saves it in into a CSV format. So you're able to view it in things like Excel or um, uh, Mega Log Viewer HD, which I often use. And um, that's how we do that. So to open it is obviously to open another MDF file that we might have taken. So that's another way of changing between um, log files that we've taken with B Flash or PCAN or Vector or whatever. We open it through there. Um, as you can see, it, we've got the X and Y axes uh, analyzing the particular graph at the moment. I can go ahead and turn that off. So that's analyze off. And now I can go ahead and now it won't analyze. But I like to have it on analyze. I, I like to know what data points we have, what values, and how that all correlates to the other PIDs that we've got in the particular data log. Another thing we can go ahead and do is right click. This is how you get this menu up and press dark mode. So let's say uh, you, pref you want to work in a dark mode. You can go ahead and do that. If this looks pretty and you prefer dark mode, you can go ahead and print it. And from here, what it will do, it will go and print it to an Adobe PDF, as you can see. Um, and the first page will be the log that you've taken, and the second page will be the, uh, the units. Um, it'll be minimum, maximum, and then the analyzed value, which my cursor was over at the point in time in which I took this particular um, uh, like print screen or screenshot or print PDF, okay? So that's that. That's how you do that. Go ahead and save that to your desktop if you want to and whatnot. Um, okay, so if I turn off dark mode, another thing that I wanted to go over, let's say we turn analyze off as well, is marker style. So marker style is basically the data points that are plotted on the graph. Let's say we want to see each particular data point that was taken for this vehicle. We can go ahead and go to marker style and then click one of these three. Um, let's go circles. So here we go, and that's where each data point was taken. So I don't need to go ahead and, and guess um, how many data points were taken in this log for this particular run. Um, it actually shows me where each data point was taken, uh, but, and then it's got obviously the, the seconds down the bottom uh, axes. So from here, um, you know, we obviously have some discrepancy here or some um, estimations that might need to be made between uh, the two data points, and this is one of the problems that I have with most flashing tools that aren't CCP or XCP compliant. This is, so I'm not concerned about that, but there are some data logs that are taken by clients and tuning companies where the data sample is too low, and it won't provide you with a high enough resolution to make an accurate assumption as to how to tune and how to go ahead and um, recalibrate and, and fix errors and uh, refine things and optimize things. So it's really important to have a high sampling data log. Um, like I said, the, one of the ways you can reduce that straight off the bat is just to um, lower the amount of data samples you're taking in the log altogether. So over the left here, I have, let's say, 30 different data, data PIDs. I can go ahead and maybe restrict that to five and then we'll get a higher resolution. All right, now, um, another thing I wanted to go over is, let's say we wanted to look at um, engine load, and we wanted to go ahead and look at something like ignition output angle. Now, you might be thinking, wow, that looks damn ugly. Well, right click, let's turn the marker style off. I like to view it like that. That's just personal preference. It's cleaner for me on the screen. I can read it easier. Uh, again, you can do dark mode if you want. I generally don't have it on dark mode. Um, from here, you can do other things like grouping by unit, and auto scaling. So auto scaling will basically put the minimum and maximum values at the top and bottom of the graph. So if I go ahead and press that again, you'll see that it puts the minimum and maximum values bottom and top of the graph. If that's not something you want to see, um, then obviously, like I said, you can turn that off and then you won't have auto scaling and then it will just be pretty, 
pretty much like that. It might be easier for you to read it that way. It's really, it's really dependent on you. Show grid, that's the grid lines behind the graph. I like to have that. It just helps me see where the data is and sort of an estimation. If I can't exactly tell, I can eyeball it and say, oh, you know, that's probably between, you know, uh, negative eight and negative 16 degrees. Um, so uh, it'd be like, let's say 10 or like 14, negative 14 as an example. By increasing the auto scaling or auto scaling it, it'll, it'll be a lot, lot higher resolution. So you can say, oh, that's actually something between a negative 11 and negative 15. So that's probably like negative 12, negative 13 now. Um, another thing we can do is we can do stacked and stacked will basically separate the graphs as you can see. So now I've got the graph separated, so they're not overlaying one another. Um, and we'll have the related PIDs on the left-hand side that relate to that particular variable that we've got selected. So I can go ahead and overlay diff different PIDs that have the exact same um, axes. So if they're all grad uh, kilowatt, which is basically the uh, ignition angle, I can go ahead and select other things that will reference that ignition angle um, axes or that ignition angle unit, sorry and that'll be placed into the same group of units. So there's no other uh, particular PIDs that I logged, this particular log, which were of percent load. So engine load's the only one of that of that um, unit. So that would be the only one I can select. And same with engine speed. There were no other um, RPM uh, PIDs that I had selected. So I can only select engine speed from that particular one. Um, another thing that we can do, let's say I take off stacked, um, and I go ahead and I can't find a variable on the left-hand side that I want to look at. I can go ahead down here and type it in. So I can go lambda, and there we go. We've got all the different lambda settings, uh, sorry, PIDs. And from here, we can go ahead and select them, lovely. And then you can go ahead there and you can view it as such, okay? Um, another thing that we can do um, is we can, if I take away this particular thing, um, we can go ahead and change the size of the log as well. So let's say we've got a, a huge data log and we basically want to find out a little region in the middle which um, we're most interested in. So I can go ahead and pull the sliders uh, left and right. So I can go pull that and say, I want to go and see the finer resolution of this log or a particular time period of this log. I know this one's quite extreme and it's not a very good example, but you get what I'm saying. I can actually change where in the log I'm, I'm looking, okay? You see that? By just by pulling the sliders left and right, okay? Another thing we can do is, let's say I take it off stacked and I take off those two there. I can actually go and change the, the axes and I can configure them to, see, to say the minimum and maximum that I want to see. So let's say I'm only interested in um, data points between 2,500 RPM and 5,000 RPM. Um, it should work, but it's not working. How's that? That's, yeah, I don't know why that's not working. Let's not worry about that too much for now. Um, there might be something I'm doing wrong. And press enter, I've pressed enter. That's all right, it might be just a little bug with B-Flash, sorry guys. But yeah, that's basically how um, you go through all the data logging um, and the uh, analysis of, of, of viewing the logs. So that'll probably end it for the end of this particular tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and um, put, put some uh, comments below and tell us what you think and if there's any recommendations you guys would like to, to make or there's anything or maybe just tell us something that you learned today. All right, have a great day. Thank you, everyone.